Welcome back to your weapon rolls are bad and you should feel bad in 3D. 3D glasses not included. Today we're going to be taking a look at the fabled Fatebringer. And I also think VOG dropped some other guns. So we'll probably talk about those as well. Mainly going to be focused on PvE as you might imagine with some PvP notes where appropriate. If you don't care at all about what I have to say and you just want to know the weapon rolls to look for, check the description. I have gotten several Fate Bringers already, so I do have some knowledge about the gun. I'm gonna spend a little more time on it compared to the other guns due to its level of fame. In the first column, we have Rewind Rounds, a new perk that throws bullets back into your gun when you run out based on the number of hits that you got with the previous magazine. We also have Killing Wind, Tunnel Vision, Osmosis, Thresh, and Explosive Payload. Second column, we have Eye of the Storm, Kill Clip, Frenzy, Opening Shot, Adrenaline Junkie, and Firefly. One of the rules I decided to keep was Explosive Payload and Frenzy. This is purely a workhorse style weapon. Loads of free boosted damage from Explosive Payload and Frenzy combined. It is the Lazy Gamer's Fate Bringer. You literally have to do nothing other than fight and your perks will be active the entire time. No thinking, no planning, just shoot gun, you're good. I think this is the best roll that you can get for something like GM Nightfalls if you plan on using a hand cannon because of that fact. You just get a flat damage bonus. There's no relying on kills or reloads to activate perks or anything like that. Killing stuff in Grandmaster is just harder than other activities, meaning you aren't getting as much value on perks that require some sort of activator. Being at full strength all the time is not a bad trait to have. The other role I have is Osmosis Firefly. Why? The only reason I kept this is because of Firefly. It was the only gun that I got with Firefly and I just wanted to see how good Firefly was. Firefly also sorta has Outlaw baked into this perk, which makes it pretty valuable as far as perks go. Would you believe me if I said this is only one of two 140 RPM hand cannons in the kinetic slot? I know. I thought I was crazy too until I realized Dire Promise is the only other kinetic 140 in the game and you can't even really farm for that one. Not that Dire Promise is, you know, bad or anything, but it's certainly not overflowing with top tier perks. It does have overflow. <sighs> Here's the deal with Firefly. And this is something I struggle with when it comes to judging weapons, exotics, armor, anything, you name it. Firefly is a fun perk. It's fun to see things explode. It's fun to get those chain kills, especially in season 14, where we have a mod that doubles the damage of said explosions. It is a good perk in activities that have low stakes, your strikes, your seasonal content, anything that's at your level. I am not sold on it as a master or GM perk for reasons mentioned earlier. It is tougher to get value out of perks that only work on kills in these activities. In select nightfalls, sure, it works. Maybe something like Fallen Saber, a bunch of stuff is grouped up, or any other activities where enemies stack up. But even then, it's probably not going to be dealing what I would consider impactful damage a lot of the time. Dragonfly is also a fun perk, but I don't think many people have it at the top of their Nightfall perk list. Now, am I going to rage at you if I see a Firefly Fatebringer in a Master Nightfall? Of course I am! What are you, nuts? No, I'm not going to do that. But I just think that there are better choices to make when you start pushing that upper echelon. Otherwise, totally fun perk to have. I like playing with it. It's very enjoyable. Osmosis... I'm not crazy on this perk. It is a utility perk mainly. Yes, you can get it to be a 20% damage bonus if you match the Singe of the day, as if you needed more damage in the Strike playlist. Again, I struggle to rate things for the Strike playlist. You know, like, who cares what perks you have when a Thunder Crash one-shots a boss? Any combo of any decent perks is gonna work. Although I will say that this is the only way to get the true quote unquote fate bringer back into your hands via osmosis arc grenades changing the element. Most of the time though, I don't think I'm really relying on a utility perk to be the main source of my elemental needs in end game content unless it happens to be a strike where there are a very limited amount of shields and I also happen to be using that subclass element. It's very conditional for a very specific need. 
You could also combo Osmosis with Adrenaline Junkie for some grenade shenanigans, but I really only recommend Adrenaline Junkie with the most aggressive of grenade builds. I'm talking uh, Crown of Tempest Warlocks, Phoenix Cradle or Halifire Heart Titans, and only in content that can truly take advantage of it, which most of the time is not Master or GM content. Thresh in the first slot is interesting. It's not usually there, although I don't value Thresh that much in the grand scheme of the game. Maybe I'm sleeping on it, but I'd rather have other perks before I took Thresh. Explosive Payload and Firefly supposedly do not have the issues that they had in Destiny 1, where sometimes the explosive damage got the kill, thus negating any sort of precision-based perks. So that is an option as well. Rewind Rounds, also very interesting, but I would argue that if you have Firefly, it's not going to be that big of a deal to just reload with that built-in Outlaw effect on Firefly. Would I rather have Rewind Rounds or Explosive Payload? That is a tougher call. In easier content, you don't really need to take those breaks that you do in harder content, which would give you natural time to reload, making Rewind Rounds valuable to that degree. Explosive Payload, on the other hand, gives your weapon the ability to deal a lot more damage at longer ranges, which can be valuable in those higher difficulty pieces of content. Tunnel Vision probably would pair that with Kill Clip if you go that route. I mean, I'm not, but, you know, you could if you wanted. PvP role that I'm going to be looking for is Killing Wind and Opening Shot. This needs all of the range help that it can get. Quick sidebar, PvP, Fate Bringer. It's, it's fine. You know, it's fine. Right now, it's a victim of the meta. 120 RPM hand cannons are just much better right now. That's really what it comes down to. I don't think there's anything egregiously wrong with Fatebringer in PvP, but I'm also struggling to give reasons to use it as well. I have a decently rolled Palindrome Overlow Rangefinder that I use for a couple of games just to try to get some frame of reference. And I did like Palindrome a little bit more. It just has a slightly better feel to it overall. Palindrome, not exactly the easiest thing to get at the moment compared to Fatebringer though, I understand. It's, it's fine, it's fine. But with 120s being as strong as they are, it is tough to suggest over all of the advantages of a 120 RPM hand cannon. Second column, you got Kill Clip, Frenzy, Firefly, all easy decisions to make here. Any one of those is gonna do well. If I had a couple of god rolls that I wanted to chase for PvE, it would probably be Explosive Payload and Firefly if I wanted the Firefly route. And then if I didn't, I guess Explosive and Frenzy. PvP, like I just said, Killing Wind, Opening Shot, probably gives you the best range that you'll be able to get which in the current meta you will want. In terms of the minor perks, I'm just gonna say go for range, that's never a bad thing. So you're looking at full bore, hammer forged, or small bore, then accurize in the second column if you want that with almost any masterwork being good. Wow, I had a lot to say on that. Moving on, Vision of Confluence. I think we all know how I feel about scout rifles at this point, especially 180 RPMs but I guess we'll talk about it. First column, we have Tunnel Vision, Wellspring, Surplus, Rewind, Killing Wind, Zen Moment. I think I'm maybe sleeping on Wellspring and Surplus. They just don't get me that jazzed up, like, at all. If I'm using Vision in PvE, my instinct is to take Rewind Rounds, and that's because it's gonna be Plink Plonk, 90 bullets to kill an enemy fest 2021, and I don't wanna have to reload in the middle of all of that. Second column, we got a bit more going on here. Firefly, Kill Clip, Disruption Break for a little utility play, Frenzy, Thresh, and Full Auto. Considering what I think I'll be doing with this in Masters and GM, my first instinct was to go with Frenzy to match the Plink Plonk energy of Rewind Rounds. It's a free damage perk, there's barely any activation cost, and you're going to be hitting shots more than you're going to be getting killing shots with this thing. Firefly is also very appealing, simply because... Firefly. It's Firefly. While scouts feature anti-barrier rounds, Disruption Break gets big bonus points, especially since scouts have a pretty easy time breaking anti-barrier shields from any range. Just remember that Disruption Break gives kinetic vulnerability, not everything vulnerability. 
If there are no anti-barrier rounds for scout rifles in a particular season, this thing's probably going to be collecting dust. The minor perks, I think it's dealer's choice here. You know, fluted if you want that handling speed. I don't think you really need range on a scout rifle in most D2 content. The stability is pretty fine too. Masterwork, I would go reload if you do not go rewind rounds. Otherwise, kind of up to you. Yeah, not as much to say on Vision of Confluence. Those are the only two primaries. Yeah, only two. It surprised me too when I was looking it up. Moving on. Praetith's Revenge 140 RPM Sniper. There is only one PvE role that I am looking for, and that is rewind rounds with high impact reserves and some sort of mag perk, probably tactical mag, with boss spec. That's it. That's the only PvE role worth going for, in my opinion, in terms of a sustain damage weapon. Everything else is suited to PvP or is just not as good as that role period. We're not using snipers to clear out trash mobs here. Snipers are for big target killing. PvP wise, we got a bit more going on, but I feel like a lot of PvP choices are personal preference. For example, this sniper does not have snapshot sights. I love snapshot on the sniper. If I cannot max my handling, I can't live without it. Some people like quick draw on their sniper. This has it. Knock yourself out if you don't have nearly maxed out handling. Otherwise, I'm grabbing no distractions. Easy choice. I'm probably taking opening shot in the second column to help with my in-air shots. I did some high impact reserves testing, and let's just say the results are very inconsistent. Sometimes you get kills with the final two shots, and sometimes you don't. Resilience matters on your enemy as well. They got four resilience, you're probably going to kill them. They got five resilience, you might kill them. Frenzy is a guaranteed two-shot kill, but keeping up Frenzy can also be an inconsistent experience. Found verdict. Oh boy. The visual of auto-loading in Vorpal caught my eye too. I saw it. But this is not a slug shotgun, therefore it will not have that same kind of potency for PvE. I don't know when you're really going to be using a shotgun in endgame content like GMs. Masters maybe once you break that 1340 barrier, but definitely not GMs. That being said, auto-loading is still appealing here as most of the other perks aren't the greatest for PvE. If you want to rewind rounds, that would be fine too. Second column, I personally like 1-2 Punch for emphasis on builds that work with some sort of melee combo. If you're not doing that, could you do Vorpal? Absolutely. Could you do Frenzy? Absolutely. PvP though, found verdict, is one beefy boy. Raw stats, better than Felwinter's Lie. You got full choke there. You got some range perks or assault mag. You got slide shot. You got opening shot or killing wind. This thing is nuts. This thing is absolutely nuts in a category where we really didn't need any more absolutely nuts things. It literally just now hit me how stupid this thing is going to be in PvP. Just stupid. Just absolutely stupid. But that's what you're looking for. I don't think any other role will meet the strength of what I just said. Moving to heavy weapons, corrective measure. Oh yeah, we needed another void machine gun like we needed a hole in our heads. But that's the original element, so you know, what can we do? Machine guns, as we know, are currently complete garbo for anything other than ad clear. Therefore, I will be focused on ad clear. Subsistence, feeding frenzy, and rewind rounds are all very, very good here. And I do not think you can go wrong with selecting any one of them. Second column, I'm mainly looking at, uh, oh God, uh, one for all, maybe Firefly? Firefly feels more like a, oh, Firefly on a machine gun, that's neat, kind of thing, as opposed to something I would actually want to use. There's nothing overly wrong with it, I guess. High impact reserves on a machine gun, that's a pass. One for All does really fit perfectly with what I'm looking to do with a machine gun. Adrenaline Junkie also works to a degree, I suppose, but One for All is going to be much easier to proc since it does not require kills in order to make it proc. Finally, Hezen Vengeance, Rocket Launcher. Number one most interesting perk here is Overflow. Allows for some shenanigans where you're able to fire a bunch of rockets in a row without needing to reload. Mm, but let's be real. The amount of times you're going to be able to chain together a bunch of rockets in a row, probably pretty slim. 
Otherwise, you're mainly going to be using this to stack two rockets in the chamber, similar to clown cartridge, but minus the reload. Hard launch, going to be on here for the velocity boost and impact casing for that hot 1% damage gain or, you know, high velocity rounds, unless you have a velocity masterwork already. I have found tracking to be quite valuable, as I have been using rockets more and more after not using them for many months. After all, it doesn't matter what perks your rocket has if your rockets don't hit your target, especially with something like Lasting Impression, where you really want to make sure that rocket sticks. Therefore, I'm inclined to want tracking on this thing if I'm looking for a Lasting Impression version of the rocket, or a Vorpal rocket, since with Vorpal, you don't need to wait for your damage on those big targets. I've seen far too many people fire a Lasting Impressions rocket at a champion as it was stunned, only for it to do no damage because the stun effect fell off before the explosion. Don't do that, you gotta pre-fire. If I'm mainly using it on stationary or slow-moving targets, barrier champions historically, then I can get away without tracking and opt for some overflow stuff or auto-reloading reliability. Unfortunately, the movement capabilities of certain enemies and bosses varies pretty highly across strikes and all activities in the game, really, which means you might want to grab a couple of rolls and then swap them in and out, depending on the rocket's main goal. Those are your Fate Bringer and also the other guns' weapon roll recommendations. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.